engineer at Board Panda. So thanks to Chain Academy and the program, I was able to work and uh, just like you, reach the end and hopefully landed a job. So that's a brief uh, introduction about me. Um, a fun thing that I like to do, I can say I like music and um, I travel a lot. So yeah, those are my little hobbies. Um, yeah. Anna, anything else that I need to say? Uh, not not uh, explicitly, unless maybe there's a general question from the trainees before we start, then uh, if there's none, we can just uh, go straight to the tutorial. Uh, any questions? Okay, no questions. So let's, let's hope you can see my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, you can. Um, okay, so basically, um, today, um, wait, what's happening? Uh, just a moment. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So, um, today we're going to, to, to talk about uh advanced sql and system migrations so basically uh i i didn't cover much of the system migration parts because um of some uh, reasons that maybe we'll cover later but on advanced um sql um we're going to, to talk about um uh, many to many relationships and um triggers as a uh, as advanced sql and in systems migration i'm going to cheat a little and not talk about it but talk about uh etl using um api and stuff like that because i think it's almost in the same area but um please forgive me if you were prepared about that i kind of didn't uh wasn't able to like prepare something uh towards the area of migration as such. So uh, apologies in advance, uh, I'm so sorry. So um, many to many relationships. Um, we are used um, in the database, as you all know, a database is a relation-based uh, database. So there is one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-one-to-many, -one -to -many, and many-to-many -many relationship. But most people don't really talk about many-to-many -many relationship uh for some reason uh i don't know why but it's actually important when you have uh things that actually uh tackle the many to many relationship part so i can say a many to many relationship occurs when multiple records in a table are associated with multiple records in another table so um as i put here an example maybe uh, a customer and and orders so a customer can purchase many many products and uh, many products can be purchased from from uh, many products can be purchased by many customers. Uh, also, we can say that maybe a song can be uh, one song can be in uh, many songs can be in many categories, and uh, many categories can be in many songs. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, or if you have any questions, just post it in the chat, and uh, that will be okay. So um, this is a brief uh, explanation of a many-to-many -many relationship, and um, a many-to-many -many relationship is represented by having a join table. So 
it's not a typical um, two table kind of structure. So you have uh, a primary, two primary tables and one table in the middle that joins both of the tables. So in most cases, in the in the middle table we have like mostly IDs, and um, maybe in a, a small demonstration we're going to see that. So you have uh, mostly the IDs that are in the in the in the in the bridge table. So uh, you'll see, for example, you have uh, student number one and uh, class number one. So in order, so maybe students one to five and classes one to five and student one is in four classes. So in this, uh, in the middle table, you'll have student number one appear three times because one, one st uh, student in many, many classes, something like that. So uh, if I'm going too fast also, please uh, kindly let me know so that uh, I don't go very, very fast. And uh, ca can you hear me? Am I... Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, hi, Desmond. So, um, yeah, let's continue. So, basically, a many-to-many -many relationship has uh, a sort of a bridge in the middle, and um, you have to like use that bridge to connect two different tables. So, it's a table that connects two different bridges. So we're going to see how to make one in a, in a short demonstration that we, we are going to do. And um, right now, let's talk about triggers. So um, in SQL, a trigger, um, a trigger is a stored procedure invoked automatically in response to events such as uh, an insert or an update or a delete uh, in, a, in a certain table. So uh, there are two types of, of triggers. Um, there's uh, the role level trigger and the statement level triggers. So basically, there's a, a, a role level trigger is, a, a activ uh, is activated for each row, which is inserted, updated, or deleted. Uh, an example is if a table has 100 rows inserted, uh, updated, or deleted, the, the trigger is automatically invoked 100 times. I, I hope that makes sense. And uh, the statement level is executed once uh, for each transaction, regardless of how many times the, row, the rows are associated to them. So we're also going to see a small demonstration on how to use triggers. So uh, also an image uh, about that. So you, a trigger happens after you insert something into the database, if you uh, update something and if you delete something. Personally, I use a trigger to 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 uh, to check for updates. Uh, for example, in a in a database, because there's no way to track entries and how they change. So I have uh, I create a sort of a table where if anything is changed in the main database or in the main table, uh, a kind of snapshot of what was there before and what is there now is actually recorded. So we can go through that in a in a brief way, and uh, we can try and in a practical, uh, let's say in a practical quote unquote way, try and replicate that with some of the insights uh, or on on update or something like that. And um, so ma managing SQL triggers, so you you create you can create a trigger. Um, you can you can drop a trigger. You can create a trigger before inserts. You can create a trigger after inserts. You can uh, create a trigger before updates. Uh, you can create a trigger after updates, uh, before a deletion, after a deletion. So you can you can show the triggers that you have um, in many in many different ways. So with that said, uh, I, I guess we can go to the first part of the practicals before we, we talk about uh, the second part of, of the tutorial. Uh, I don't like the word tutorial, but yeah, of the tutorial. So uh, any questions until there before we, we try and do some practical stuff? Uh, questions, no questions? 
Okay, so. Um, if no questions, then uh, I think I'm going to present my other screen. Um, can you see my screen? Uh, I'm, I'm, I've opened um, Workbench. Yes, yes, you can. Okay. And uh, yeah, so personally, uh, we can create a, a, a table, maybe some few tables, and then we see. Uh, 10x tutorial. Oh, sleep. Oh, that's the wrong one. Open new model, new model, yeah. Um, so we we can create um a simple uh table that records maybe something like um what can you say something like uh videos and uh these videos can have many um. Sorry, whatever that. Mm. Oh, I closed the. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just a minute. Can you guys see my screen? Uh, we could, but you it just uh, disappeared again. Oh, okay, so nice. Now, can you see workbench? Yes. Okay, cool. So, um, as I was saying, we can we can create um, two tables. I can say so. One table has like um, uh, shows, for example, and um, another table has like different cuts of of the of the of the show so for example um we have a movie like um what's what's your favorite movie let's say um mm, the gray man because it's 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 current it's latest so for example the gray man um is made up of different like for example 15 shots of uh of of short clips combined then you make that one and uh, you see, um, so we are going to to try and replicate that because one 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 show can have many. So many shows can belong to to many tips. Uh, let's call them tips. And um, many tips can belong to also many shows. So we're going to try and replicate something like that. If uh, if that makes sense. So you can see uh, movie table. Movie table and um, in the columns you can have something like um, the ID. And have uh, 
maybe the name of the show and uh, for example the the duration um so we can say this is time yeah that's our first table just something something simple for demonstration and then um we get the second table so we can call the second table as uh, maybe um scenes how do you spell scene S C E N E. Like S C E N E. Yeah. So, and uh, in columns, you can have maybe the ID, and um, we have um, the name, and um, we can have something else like also duration duration so um in 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 this second in the in the first one we'll have like long durations like um let's say uh one hour or something and in the second scene scene one uh a scene can be up to like 10 10 minutes or 15. so if you combine uh different scenes in a di in like different um order you can create uh, a different movie so i don't know if that makes sense so let's say that um these guys just make a lot of scenes and uh, one day they sit down and decide to combine different scenes of different movies so i know it's not a good example but yeah yeah we can use it for now and then we have our our middle table that's called um you can call it like let's call it something like a recipe of of what makes these tables. Uh, sorry about that. Close that. So um, in the recipe tables, we can have the ID, the actual ID, and um, uh, movie ID. And we can have scene ID. Which is also an integer. And uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to create foreign keys here uh, to combine them and make uh, the the many to many relationships so as i said that one 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 movie can have many uh many many movies can have many scenes and uh many scenes can belong to many movies i don't know if that makes sense so let's say for example we have um movie number one uh it has seen scenes number one id number one two and three and uh movie number two has uh seen ID number two, three, and maybe four. So there's that reputation of some sort. So we're going to make our first uh, recipe for in key. Uh, we're going to make it to the movie table. And as you can see, you can see it's a one, one, two, one too many. So it's, it's already like picked it up and stuff. So you just say ID to ID. And then in the second one, you can use the same table and it's still the same. So in short, this is, with that demonstration, we have made a many, a many to many relationship. As, uh, as we saw from our, our slides, it's pretty much the same thing with the students and, and um, classes and classes and students. So pretty much the same thing. So um, with this, we can, can just create,
I don't know. I, I I like to cheat, but this is not a good. This is not a good practice. So uh, uh, I first make the schema, and then I I steal the code here. I copy. I copy it to, to clipboard. And then um, it creates it, and I close. So it it's not that good of a practice, but um, it's something that I use. Then um, if I run this, I can get the the whole database, I believe. So let's see. Yep, it's there. So we can get rid of that. And uh, we have our tables here. So we can do uh, the same things. We can make a few inserts, and then we can try trigger and updates and see if something like um, happens. So we can say inserts into um, movie, insert into movie table. Um, what do I say? Search into movie table, and then we have um, a name, I think. Oh, I forgot to put ID as outer increment, so you can, you should need to have ID first. And then um, you have the name. Then you have the duration. And then you have values. ID one comma. Rayman, comma duration. You can say zero. Hmm, an hour. Yes, yeah, so we can make this like four, maybe five times. Then you can just change. We call this the gray woman. Duration, you can say it's 30. And uh, the ID, you can give it two. Um, name of movies, guys, please help me. I know, I know you've been, you've been, you've been in 10 Academy and you don't have any time to watch movies, but that you touch that. Just unmute and give a suggestion. Hello, are you guys there? In the text, in the text. Oh, in the text. Yeah, now, and now you feel how everyone used to feel when, when, um, when you're you're facilitating and no one is talking let's now let's see idiots why does this three idiots suggestion looks like someone that i know would like this movie so uh we can say this is like a minute 15 this is like a minute uh, an hour 10 sorry then you can just uh, close that and run it. Okay, I guess it's done. Yeah, so that's the first one. Then um, we can insert maybe uh, the second, the second one for the second table. Not recipes, but uh, the scene table. Pretty much the same, so we can just change the, the name here to scene, and then we can change maybe this to short 100. We can say it's in minutes and uh, short to 2000. Say this is like five minutes.
that can be 15. Maybe this can be short 300. That can be 10. So something like that, and you just press enter. So now to come and use now the the recipe uh the recipe column in when now it comes into play we just have to like just put um what's this we put the the, the ids of of this um of these shows so you have um four shows and four tips so you can say insert into recipe um id from a movie id Comma, scene ID, Matron, scene ID. Then you can say values. Um, so you have the first ID is one, then comma, maybe ID movie one has scene number four uh, in it. So we have the first one as that. And then um you can see uh the same this is id2 but the same movie one has also uh tip three in it then you say comma um the same movie one has seen seen one in it so that's uh, uh, an example and then you can move to like for I need to have put like auto increment in the IDs to prevent trying to like change the stuff, but it's fine. So movie two can also have like um scene number one in it and uh the same ID uh movie two can have scene number four in it, something like that. Then we can do the last one for movie number number three number four maybe because you can leave number three alone for the next um for the next one four we can see it has number one that's it so if we if we select from here we'll only see numbers what you want, so if you want to see um, what actually these numbers represent, then you'll have to write the query that um, selects from, and say select, um, what are you selecting? Select m dot, dot name, comma, um, s dot, name um from movie table um m then we, we can inner join an inner join scene s on on um what's the name what's the name um just a minute let's on um id yes sorry let's just id is equals to Let's go um from dot id no um this one more thing that i'm not doing um i need to also include the recipes so um just a moment let me think let me think just a little bit mm -hmm. so you need to get each inner join with um 
Yeah, we also need to inner join. Inner join, um, inner join recipe. Recipe as R on, um, In a join R on M dot ID dot ID is equals to R dot ID. I think this will work. D and this is ID. Maybe that's this shows. Um, yeah, I believe that this should work, but, um, maybe we change, um, this one too. Hester ID is equals to dot, um, no, that won't work. Uh, just a minute, guys. Oh, yeah, this will be R dot movie ID. Movie ID, and this should be r dot scene id yeah, i think this will work let's see nope you have an error Maybe we try from a uh, recipe R, then in a join movie table. Is M M and M dot movie is equal to that to that. And then we in a join the the chips, the recipe table, scene table this on S dot ID is equal to this one. Non column. M dot scene ID. Oh, yeah, this needs to be R. Yeah, so you get something, something like this in the in the table. So you have um, many to many relationship uh, being represented. Something like that. So you have Grayman having uh, many having many, and so something something of that sort so now if you want to create um if you want to create a trigger a trigger so that whenever somebody updates um the duration of of a movie from uh one duration to another so um what 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 do you need so we are going to have um two more tables that are going to like hold the history and then you're going to put the trigger in in the in the movie table so we're going to add we're going to add a table called uh, main history it's 
main that's going to have um id um maybe uh dates that it was modified date and then you can have i uh, will put we'll put the default and then you have um the table involved So um, we're going to have, yeah, it's got a uh, table involved, involved. And uh, that will be that. And this one here, you can put this, add this. Mm -hmm. So console my key, and then you create another table that's called um the details that has the details. So uh, history details. So, yeah, history. I have ID um updates history main ID so integer yes primary key also um, not, maybe not primary key And then you can have um old um old old time new time. then we can have maybe the movie ID it belongs to. Yep, something like that. Then we're going to make one foreign key on uh, that one. So now that that is done, we're going to now make our trigger. So when you're making a trigger, you can go here, say alter table, then go trigger. Then as I said, you remember you can have it before insert, after insert, before update, after update, before delete, after delete. So as you're going to have it before, before updates. So you're just going to press the plus and the first part is going um, to kind of be be done for you. Um, and then um, we can start. We declare our ints and just push this onto the side like that.
So, um, again, here we say declare um, main underscore ID int then, um, then you can say insert. into um, main history, history main, um, modified dates, um, call it Dates, so dates, comma table uh, involved. And then the value. I'm oh, sorry. We can pass um the the now <clears throat> the now function that will get the, the the time now, and then um. The table involved, so the table involved is movie. Movie underscore table. That, and then, then after that, we're going to select uh, the last inserted um, last insert last insert ID uh, going to put it into to main underscore ID like that. And then after that, we're going to write now an if statement. So here's where like we're going to have like some now the logic of what is, is being changed. So if so if the new if new dot um what is it what is the name? If new dot duration if new dot duration um is not equals to is not equals to old old dot uh, duration um then then we do something so what do we do we insert into our our um, what's the name our details our history details so we insert Insert into history details. Um, the updates. It's the update history. To remain ID. Um, comma. From the old time, comma the new time, comma movie movie ID. Then we close that. Then you say values is equals to the main ID. Uh, comma, <clears throat> comma, the old, old dot, uh, we have, it's all first, yeah, old dot duration, comma, new dot duration, 
comma old dots id <clears throat> so um yeah all dots id yeah all dots id and then we close put then you say and if very close so i think uh this will help us uh this will be our trigger I believe everything looks good so we can test it out so basically what we did is we created a, a, a table that holds the main uh, rough information of any update that happens and then we have the one that has uh more details so in the more details one so every time that we create, um, we, are, we are updating uh, the movie tables. We are going to insert into the, the history main, we're going to insert the dates and the table that in, is involved. So right now our table that is involved is movie table. And then um, <clears throat> we're going to say if uh, the new duration that is being inserted is not equals to the old duration, then we do something but if they're equal then nothing happens so that's basically how we're going to keep track of of our, our things so now that that is done we are going to try and make an update um in our movies so we can update maybe grayman because the duration is one one hour we can update grayman uh into something else so let's say update um it's movies it movie table uh sets duration equals to zero one thirty zero zero where ID is equals to one. Movie table duration sets where ID is goes to one. Field ID is not have default value. Okay, so we can change that and say where well, name name equals Grayman maybe. Let's see if this works. oh okay uh i'm sorry so now we have uh it's not an error but it's like um some sort of a guideline that's when you're using um sql it's good to like uh, have so um when you are when you're using sql sometimes it's advisable to have your safe safe mode on updates to be what's the name to be um to be on on one or uh, enabled this will help for you not to to be able to make any updates that are unnecessary so you can add that there and that will help it removes the safe mode and then now i think it should run but you still have an error does not have a uh, default value oh so i think this is an error from uh, okay, so you can say all dots its name instead of instead of ID. So let's see. ID does not have default value okay I, I i really don't know why it's not working but um in real sense it needs to like have to show like um the old time which is zero zero one zero zero and the new time which is 
0130 and um the new name of the of our of our what's this uh and the name of of our of our movie so i'm going to like go through it again and make a, a good uh better tutorial on that and send uh, a, a short video that maybe you guys can watch later about that because of also time so that's basically it when it comes to like triggers so i'm um, so sorry uh i can't troubleshoot it right now because of time and stuff like that so if i share my other screen uh we can finish the presentation mm. Um, can you see my screen? Um, so yeah, uh, on ETL using uh, APIs, so most of of, uh, of you guys are going to be data engineers or some of you guys, and I think uh, that this is an important topic that you guys should be con conversant with. Even though I haven't covered it uh, more in the slides and stuff, I've put some resources for you that you can check out and um, actually read about them and they'll help you. So as you all know, and we've known for quite some time that ETL means extract, transform and load. And uh, in this sense, um, maybe you've done a project where you get, you extract data from somewhere, you transform it and load it in like a database and load it in AWS or something like that. So in the, in, it's, it's the same thing. And uh, what you're going to require is an API endpoint that you can actually um query and uh using the get requests and stuff like that that's why i'm saying uh you need to have knowledge about um request packaging and some json because most of the data that comes from um an api endpoint through the access token if it requires one um comes in a form of a json so when you get the json you also need to know how to flatten that json to make it into a data frame and uh, that will help when it comes to um, transforming the data the way you want and before you make the final push to to where you want to store it. And um, with that, I think that's all I had prepared. These are some of the resources that you guys can read uh, about. There's a um, MySQL tutorial that has everything that uh, you need to know about SQL. There is, um, the second one will help you to learn how to flatten different types of JSONs. Um, the other one will help you with ETLs. And uh, starting data engineering is actually one of my best data engineering materials because it helped me when I was preparing for like interviews and projects and stuff like that. And uh, the last one is how to access um, APIs uh, data using, using APIs. So, I'm so sorry uh, we are short on time and I didn't prepare much on on the second part of of uh, of, uh, of the top of the tutorial. But uh, if you have any questions, please be sure to ask uh, now. And also, I'll make the short video as promised, and I'll show you how to use the triggers properly. Um, yeah. So, any questions, please? Um, Anna, I don't think anyone has a question, so about you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jakinda, for that uh, introduction to a few of the advanced SQL um, statements that they will need to know, and also for just an, a mention of the API. So you'll just send the document, the presentation, and I'll share it to the trainees so that they can get access to the links you've just shown us. So, and uh, to, the, to the trainees, I hope you are able to follow through what uh, Jakinda was uh, showing us on um, the SQL. He has touched a bit on the simple statements like the select statements, insert statements, 
and also today he's mentioned a little bit more on the triggers. So there was a document shared by Aaron on um, gauging your skills, maybe in SQL. I'm not sure where it is, I've been looking for it, but uh, maybe you've seen it, it was shared uh, earlier in the program. So SQL is very important for that uh, those who chose the engineering track. So just with what Jakinda has taught us, thank you Jakinda again for that. Just uh, gauge yourself. Where do you think you are? What else do you think you need to learn? Were you able to follow through because you understand what uh, SQL is? Were you lost? Just uh, gauge yourself and know which skills you need to improve on uh, if you are actually interested in the data engineering track. Um, otherwise, aside from that, I see there are no questions for Jakinda. And you guys are forgetting that Jakinda was actually did batch for and um, is working as a data engineer, and you can ask even broader questions. This is week 12. Yeah, it's uh, actually funny or weird that you don't have any question for Jakinda. So if you have any questions, you can just ask. Otherwise, I'll just proceed to give maybe a thank you to Jakinda for actually taking his time off to be able to be here with us. And uh, I'll also like to ask uh, one trainee to also give a formal thank you to Jakinda, who's been with us for the last one, one hour in the volunteer. Yes, you did, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Jakinda, for the presentations and for coming up uh, to guide us on SQL. And I think it was really helpful and insightful. Uh, I just have one question on your board. Uh, I think, yes, you are working as a data engineer. Uh, what's your day-to-day -day, uh, work life looks like as a data engineer at the company that you're working on? And what are your primary responsibilities and what do you think that we need to focus more? Um, so uh, that's a good question, Ijidia. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but um, I can say that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I mostly work with SQL and Python and uh, APIs just um, just on uh, on everything I can say because most of the information that I'm getting, most of the data that we are scraping is all from um, online-based um, websites and stuff like that. So SQL becomes very important because we are storing uh, we're storing live, not live, I wouldn't say live data, but we have a sort of a pipeline where we get information from the API, we transform it and store it in S3 bucket, and then we get it from S3 bucket and populate um, the SQL. So every uh, dashboard that is built in our company, uh, the information comes from uh, the SQL database. But um, the previous historical data is all stored in, in an S3 bucket. So for you to be a good data engineer, you have to actually understand the, the process of, of uh, what's this, what's, what's the name? You need to understand the process of uh, ETL or uh, ELT to some extent. You need to, to be good at SQL because for example, um, what I showed you uh, about triggers and checking for information was actually a challenge that I had um, like two weeks ago where there was an, like they needed, I needed to know what changes are being made in the database and uh, by who. So that helps me to, to kind of become uh, accountable of the data if anything changes and stuff like that. So on a daily, on a day to day basis is uh, I get data, prepare it and store it. And uh, I make it um, available for all the analysis that is needed, all the dashboard that is needed to be prepared and also for machine learning um, exercises or, or investigations that are needed. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, a data engineer's job. Um, yeah, uh, okay. follow-up question maybe? Okay, yeah, I, thank you for that. I, I'm just asking this out of curiosity, but uh, uh -huh. can some of the jobs be done using Python instead of SQL? Why are companies looking for uh, SQL primarily because if I'm not wrong, I think you can also load data from S3 bucket and other sources using Python and also load it to a destination. Uh, why are you 
Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So um I think uh SQL is important because it's actually the basics. So by knowing the basics, you can actually play around with it more. So you can use uh SQL in actual in your in your Python code actually. So if you if you uh, use the MySQL connector and stuff, you can actually just write normal Python code and have your SQL code in it. And um, most, uh, many companies haven't yet uh, started using other other stacks uh, as you would think they have, but it's good to be prepared. And that's one thing that Yabo Bell used to tell us is we need to be exposed to all type of poison so that when the time presents itself, you can actually work um and produce so i can say that as much as you want to learn um the other cool and other fun tech stacks you need to uh be very solid in in, in the basics also because it starts from basics and then you you improve and and uh go further so yeah okay thank you you're welcome Thank you so much, Didier, for those uh, good questions. And uh, I don't know if anyone else has a question. I thought uh, maybe it's uh, also good to mention to you, Didier, that um, even though we have uh, yes, the Python for loading, uh, maybe extracting from S3 bucket and maybe to your data warehouse, your MySQL, your SQL server, you'll find that uh, SQL is uh, the, the basic language used to communicate with most uh, structured relational databases. So just knowing SQL in its basics will actually help you a lot when working with the databases in general. So Daisy, you have another question? Yes, um, thank you. Thank you very much, Akina, for walking us through the session. Uh, my question is not related to the tutorial, but rather as we transition into the next phase for the job search phase, um, what pointers would you mention that helped you really stand out to recruiters as a data engineer? Um, one thing I'll tell you, Daisy, is listen to what Arun tells you. That's one. Actually, that's the main, main thing. And then secondly, um, as uh, you have um, the different, the different uh, career paths that you want to go through. So sit down and actually look at your skills against all the career paths that are there and choose wisely. Uh, so don't choose uh, one because your friend is going through that route or something. Choose based on your strengths. And if you see somewhere that's lacking, uh, actually go to Datacom, find projects and improve. And then the third thing that I'll tell you is apply as many jobs as you can as many jobs as you can every day make it like a routine when you wake up uh you just apply when you're going to bed you just apply because from the 100 one or from the 1000 applications that you make there, there's only going to be a few that you're going to get so a good example is myself i did like um around 300 applications in one month and from three 300 applications i got like around five interviews. So you have to like spread your wings and apply and apply and keep your skills in check. So listen to Arun, look at your skills and apply. By listening to Arun, when you apply jobs and get interviews, Arun will literally coach you and, and uh, give you advice. Listen to that. Listen to what he says. He's a very wise man. So listen to him. That's all I'll tell you. That's how it worked for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that question, Daisy. I don't know if we have another question for Jakinda. Or we can close there. Okay, I tend to assume that silence means that there is nothing else we can add on. So once again, Jakinda, thank you so much for being with us for the last one hour and uh, for the insights you've just given to the trainings. Thank you so much. So if uh, there's no other questions, I'll just end uh, the tutorial here and uh, just say bye to everyone.
Okay, bye bye Jacinda.